friends, welcome you all to the online Gurukul. I am Varsha Ma, and today we are going to be discussing chapter number two, Science, Nutrition in Animals of Class 7. We all know that we eat different kinds of food to derive different kinds of nutrients for our body to function effectively. We drink a cup of tea, we drink two glass of milk, we have bread, we have chapatis, we have rice, we have raw fruits, we have cooked uh, vegetables, we even have raw uh, vegetables to derive the different kinds of nutrients for our body to function effectively. Now, once we have eaten a chapati or a rice, then what does it happen to that chapati or rice or an apple so that we derive the required nutrients out of it so that the body functions effectively. That's what we are going to learn in this chapter. So let's begin. The very first thing which is associated with this chapter is the word known as digestion. Now, before we enter and understand this word, what digestion is, let me explain you firstly, what is ingestion and what is ingestion. Ingestion talks about taking in of food. When we take in the food, that is known as ingestion. That means eating. And now, once the nutrients is derived from the food and what is expelled out from our body is known as ingestion. Now, between this ingestion and ingestion, what is happening in our inside our body is our is digestion. That is, the food is broken down into simpler substances so that we derive the required nutrients from it. And this process is known as digestion. I hope that's clear when what do you mean by ingestion, ingestion and digestion. Now, we all know that once we have eaten breakfast around about 8 o'clock in the morning, we don't feel hungry till 10, 30, 11. Between those two, two and a half hours, what is happening inside our body is our digestion. Now, let's now move into the next level that how is this digestion taking place? To we complete this digestion, happening in our body, we have a sequence of organs which are involved in this process and they are in this order and go one after the other. So we begin with the buccal cavity which is the food from which it is the place in which the food is taken in, that is mouth. Secondly, after this we have esophagus which is the food pipe through which the food is transferred from the buccal cavity to our stomach. The third part of this alimentary canal is stomach, followed by the small intestine. After which we have large intestine, where the absorption of water and other minerals are taking place. And after which we have rectum, where is the collection of the unwanted food material takes place. And finally, it is expelled out from a body through anus. So this process, this different organs which are involved in the digestion process is known as elementary canal. One second. It is known as elementary canal or it can also be known as the digestive tract. Right? Now, we will be learning about each of these organs one after the other. Apart from these organs which are there in our elementary canal, we have certain glands also involved in this process of digestion. We have like salivary glands which are present in our mouth. Then we have pancreas which is there. We even have our um, liver involved in it in the digestion process. 
we have our gallbladder, which is again there present in our digestion system process. So all these organs and the various glands are present in our body and they all work together to help the bread which we have eaten in the morning or the lunch we have had or the dinner we had, all of them are digested because of the help of these different kinds of organ and glands. Now let's learn the first one in detail. We will be learning about buccal cavity firstly in detail today. The buccal cavity, also nearly known as the mouth, is the place from where the food is taken in. Now, the mouth comprises of two sets of teeth, which is your, uh, the upper jaw as well as the lower jaw. Then, we have the muscular organ which moves all around, that is the tongue. They together work for our food to be digested, chewed properly so that the digestion begins and happens very easily. Now, when we are talking about the two sets of teeth, that is the upper jaw and the lower jaw, we all know we have the milk teeth which is also known as the perm, uh, temporary teeth and we also have the permanent teeth. Right. Now, to understand them, what are the temporary teeth and what is our permanent teeth, let's move ahead. Temporary teeth or also known as the milk teeth, basically they are those teeth which arises, that means which grows primarily between the age bracket of temporary teeth primarily grows between the age of six months to six years, six to seven years. And then they fall off between the age of 8 to 12 years. Once these teeth, once these teeth temporary or the milk teeth are fallen off, they are taken place by or their places are taken over by the permanent teeth. That means they grow after the age of 12 years onwards. And these are the teeth which are there with us till we go into the grave. That means till we die, these are the permanent teeth which we have. Now, the temporary teeth are basically 20 in number, comprising of 10 in the lower jaw and 10 in the upper jaw. Whereas the permanent teeth are 32 in number. That means 16 in upper jaw and 16 in lower jaw. Now, in the temporary teeth, we have the, in temporary teeth, the premolars are not present. That means we can say that premolars are absent. Now, what are premolars? Premolars are primarily a type of teeth which are helped in grinding and chewing of the food. And here, the premolars are present. So they, these are some of the basic difference between the temporary teeth and permanent teeth. Now, when we know that we have different kinds of, uh, we have two sets of teeth, so we should also come to know that we have basically four types of teeth. 
that means a human has basically and this some of the animals they say the carnivores they have these four types of teeth the very first one is that we have in our mouth that is incisors they are also known as the front teeth as the word incisor which is quite similar to the word scissors that means which is used for the purpose of cutting and biting any food which is cut or taken a bite of it which is used a bite with a which is done by the help of incisors followed by them we have canines they are the sharp teeth and they are known are for pier tearing piercing and tearing especially when you all like to have sugar cane so we basically pierce or we can say that we basically pierce our teeth and then we tear it so they are also known as the piercing and the their function is piercing and tearing followed by we have our molars and premolars both of them are used for chewing as well as grinding of the food properly that is why it is always said that we should chew our food properly so that the grinding becomes easy and thereby our digestion also becomes once we have known about the various kinds of teeth and the two sets of teeth that we have now let us know what the second organ that is present in our mouth which helps in the digestion process is the tongue the tongue is a muscular organ which can moves in all the four directions in the tongue apart from talking we as we know the primary function of tongue is that it helps us to talk it also helps us to in chewing of the food how does that helps in chewing of the food we can say that it basically helps in mixing and chewing of the food and thirdly we all know that we have different tastes for food some are sweet some are sour some are bitter some are salty and that credit goes to the tongue the tongue is the person which tells us the different taste for the food because it has taste buds now once we have known the two organs that are present in the buccal cavity that is the teeth sets and the tongue how do they together work in the digestion process once the food is taken inside that we have taken a bite of a particular food item that we have eaten the tongue and the teeth together works in the help in the process for digestion they basically the teeth helps us to break the food in different smaller pieces and the tongue while i'm talking about mixing that means the buccal cavity also consists of something known as the salivary gland which secretes saliva right once we all know that the mama is making pizza and in the kitchen for the dinner her mouth starts watering why does the mouth start watering that is there is a secretion there is an extra secretion of saliva from the salivary gland and the tongue helps us this saliva to be mixed with the food that we are eating so that we get certain taste of the food that we are eating and it also helps the food to be chewed properly and digested easily so here and what is the kind of food in which the saliva plays a very important role that is carbohydrates that means the food which is rich in carbohydrates like boiled rice rotis potatoes they are all rich in carbohydrates so breads we also have breads in it they all start their digestion process in the mouth itself with the help of saliva present in it that is why when we eat rice we eat roti or breads do we feel that they are a bit sweeter in taste why because they are getting be mixed with the saliva which adds the taste to the taste of sweetness to the various kinds of carbohydrates foods that we are eating i hope now that the portion on buccal cavity is clear to you thumbs up or thumbs down right very good so now let's move into the next part now that we know that buccal cavity is so important to us 
we should also take care of this buccal cavity. That means the tooth has to be taken care of. How do we do that? We should brush. Brush our teeth. Okay. Avoid having excess of sweet food. Usage of floss to clean our mouth, especially the food that has got stuck between those are teeth, right? So these are few steps and visit definitely visit to the dentist regularly. Right. So that is an overview of the chapter of on the uh, portion of the chapters on foot teeth on buccal cavity. And now we are going to moving into the next part of this chapter. That is the next organ that we have it on our list. That is esophagus. When we are pronouncing esophagus, the O is silent, and but we say it as esophagus. Oh, sorry. It is also known as the food pipe. Here, once the food has been properly digested, it is now once of sorry, once the food has properly been chewed and semi digested in the mouth, it is now being transferred from the uh, buccal cavity to our food pipe which is just lies next to our, sorry, to the windpipe, right? Now, this is our food pipe and this is our windpipe. It is always said that the windpipe has a flap over it, right? Which is known as the epiglottis or you can simply call it as a flap. Now, what happens when we are eating the food, this flap quickly covers the windpipe. It does not allow the food from the stomach to enter to the windpipe. So it should directly go into the food pipe or the esophagus, right? So now that is, that is why it is always reminded not to speak while eating so that the food does not by chance or by mistake enters our windpipe. The food is transferred from the buccal cavity through the esophagus to our third organ, which is known as the stomach. A stomach is a J-shaped organ. It is a J-shaped organ. It's a flat, muscular J-shaped organ. And it is the widest part of the elementary canal. Once the food has entered our stomach by the esophagus, here the digestion of the food takes place. How does the digestion of the food now here takes place? Our stomach primarily secretes three types of juices. Or you can say enzymes. They are number one, we have hydrochloric acid. Then we have our mucus. And we have the digestive juices. Here now, we will be learning about each one of them and its role in the digestion process. The hydrochloric acid plays a two important role. Firstly, it keeps the medium of the stomach acidic. That means when we eat eating a food, that, that uh, could be that certain germs enter our food, uh, stomach along with the food that we have eaten. So hydrochloric acid kills the harmful bacteria. 
that has entered our body while we were eating the food. Secondly, the mucus present in our body, in the stomach, keeps the track that whether the hydrochloric acid is being produced in excess or not. If it is being produced in excess, the mucus take care that the inner lining of the stomach, that is the inner lining of the stomach is not being eroded. That means the acid is not playing a much of effect on the inner lining of the stomach. must have heard that when you eat too much of excess of spicy food or sometimes you might experience oh mama i am having a stomach cramps and what is it mama i feel that i have acidity or digestion problem then that means there could be that there has been excess of hydrochloric acid inside your stomach for which you might need some medication and how uh, do this hydrochloric acid is reduced by what kind of medicine that we should take will be discussed in another chapter in class 7 science that is acid bases and salts in which we will be discussing about the type of medicine or the salt we take to reduce the hydrochloric acid in our stomach that is present in mostly all the type of digestive uh, syrups that we take in like for example digene in which we take what kind of salt is present, we will be discussing in that chapter. The third part of the two is the digestive juices. The digestive juices which is secreted by the inner lining of the stomach helps to digest the food that we have eaten. So, the maximum digestion process takes place in the stomach. But here, the digestion is not completely over. It will be completely, completely done once the food enters the small intestine, which we will be learning and understanding in the next video. So, stay tuned for the next upcoming part, the second part of this chapter, shortly. Thank you and bye-bye. Do, don't forget. But yes. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel, The Online Gurukul. And yes, if you have any doubt, any confusion, you can give me, give us a, the comment on the chat box. Thank you. Bye-bye.